Welcome to the Twisted Sage Build It Yourself Taurus Tutorial and Meditation. Today we are going to be making this beautiful Alchemist Taurus. We begin with the rings that you have purchased in the set, which are our two center rings of the Divine I Am, our 12 chalice rings, and our harmonizer ring. The tools and supplies needed are a piece of cardboard, approximately 12 inches by 12 inches, your painter's tape preferably, you can use masking, but we prefer painter's tape for this purpose, a ruler, wire in a 22 gauge, which you can buy at most all hardware stores or online, and wire in a 20 gauge. We also need a protractor, small pair of needle nose pliers, preferably without the etching on the jaws, a smooth nosed needle nose pliers. I like the bent nose, but you can find any. These ones I bought at Harbor Freight for like five bucks, been the best pliers ever. And a pair of wire snips and a pencil. All right, so we begin by finding the approximate center of your piece of cardboard. This one, I actually already have my center, but what we'll do is we'll just make one line across, lightweight, and go tip to tip and find another line where they intersect as your center point. And I simply put a pencil hole there in that center point, just barely popping through the cardboard. All right, now then, we go through and we make our horizontal line. And this one can be a fairly dark line as we move across. Now then, we take our compass. And with our compass, we find our center. And we make our marking at the 60 degree and the 120 degree marks. And we flip the cardboard and we do the same. We find our center. We line up center point. Make our 60 degree mark and our 120 degree mark. And now then we simply connect those two markings through the center. And again, all the way across your cardboard in making this a semi-dark line. And then we will have three intersecting lines at 60 degrees each. Again, making that semi-dark so we can see it. Okay, so next, let's take our 20 gauge, which is the heavier of the two wires, and we're going to take a piece that is approximately four inches in length, and a piece that is approximately two inches in length. Okay, so next, with the hole that we have inserted through, we're going to take our 4 inch wire and bend it in half. So as we make this hooped wire. Now, down here on the hoop end, we want to close this hoop up just a little bit. Don't close it up completely tight but just make it a smaller hoop, like such. Our two inch wire. We're gonna fold our two inch wire in half and it can just simply be just a sample little fold there. Doesn't have to be exact. And we feed that through 
this loop. So that way we have our wire and our holder. Now then we're going to take that wire and we put it through our four inch wire that's folded in half. We're going to put through our hole. So we simply put that right through our center hole. As you see I have markings on the back of my board here as well. So that it sticks up on this front side as this little V. Now on the back side we want to tape this down so that it doesn't move anywhere. So we'll take a piece of our tape making this taunt and just taping this piece down so that it stays. Now then we have our V on this side. Okay, next we take our heavier gauge Divine I Am ring. With this we want to take a measurement so that we can make some hash marks on this board so that we can center this ring up. So I like to use the millimeters versus inches. Um, to me it's just a little bit easier to read and to be a little bit more precise. So I'm finding that the inside diameter of my ring is 88 millimeters. And again, you can certainly use your inch marks which that would be oh, approximately three and a half inches. But again, to me it's easier to divide 88 in two. So 88 is our diameter of our ring for the inside diameter. So I'm gonna to go to 44 millimeters for our center and make a mark on each side on this line. And there's 88 there. So that way we have our mark on this line and we're going to do that on all three lines. Again, in the very center, I line this up to 44 millimeters. Make one mark at 88 and one mark at zero. And our next line, lining that up in the center, mark at zero mark at 88. And again, if you use inches, just you'll just have to do your dividing and find the exact half. So now that we have our six marks, we can then center our Divine I Am ring. So we get it really close there to where you can barely see each of those hash marks. Now we take our painter's tape And as we hold this ring in place, we're going to put the painter's tape in one of the pies here. We don't want to cover up our lines. So we're just going to simply tape this down to where it will hold this ring in place. And we don't need six pieces. We can simply do this in three. So going on every other side of your pie, or every other pie, and just taping it down so that this ring stays in place. There we go. Okay. The Divine I Am ring. The Divine I Am is the energy of the soul. So let's go into the heart space and bring our soul in and ask for the assistance, both physically and energetically, in the creation of this tool. So we take our three breaths to go into the heart space, simply closing your eyes, putting your attention onto your physical heart, imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth, and breathing in that light of the earth up through your feet and into the heart. Connecting heart to heart to creation, source, soul, creator, God, breathing in that light into the heart. 
the third breath, breathing in both earth and sky together. You become a column of light, grounded, connected, and in the heart space. Now we ask for our soul to step fully into the present, fully into this space. Your light, just keep breathing it in. Bringing your light into every cell of your body, in between every cell. Bringing it out into this project, into this ring. And just requesting that your soul assist you in both the physical and the energetic creation of this Taurus. Okay. Next we have six of our chalice rings. Now these rings you will find a weld spot and if you don't find the weld it is okay but usually you can see just that slight discoloration of the bronze that we use for the brazing. So we're going to take two of these rings finding your weld spots and we're going to drop these two centers down into that V wire in the center and place our weld spots right out here on these lines. So here I have on my first horizontal line those two weld spots and right here these two rings are meeting right in the center in this wire V. Now we'll do this two more times again finding your weld spot and your weld spot. And these two centers we put inside of this V our two weld spots we put right out here on this outer line. Again, finding the two welds, one here and one here. And again, these centers we just put so that it is within that V of that wire and our two welds out here on this line. So now then we just gently push down in the center and we bring up our V wire and just start to slowly twist it together. So we're just going to twist by hand just a couple of twists just to kind of keep it in the general vicinity. Now we'll go through and if you need to move your rings around to where they are sitting pretty close to that line, to that weld spot. And that your petals are oh, semi, semi the same. Basically what we're looking at on our petals is your two tips of your petals here are going to intersect right on top of your divine I am ring right on this line. You don't have to have these perfect right now but just in that general vicinity. Now then I'm going to put my fingers on either side of that center wire and just push down a little bit as then I now can grab the center wire and twist it tighter. We don't want it super tight. We want it just tight enough to take out some of that play. So see there's still a lot of play in there. I'm just going to push these down just tighten it a couple more turns just to take some of that play out because we don't want that moving around what we're trying to do is we're making sure that all of these petals intersect in the very center so don't have to over tight but just tighten enough so that they're not really jiggly but you'll still want a little bit of play in them just so that we can move them around. Okay, so next we will take our 20 gauge wire, the heavier of the two, and we're going to cut seven or eight pieces and we'll just do eight pieces at three and a half inches. 
So I'm going to measure out my first piece of wire at three and a half inches and cut it. And then I'm just going to use it as the measure to cut my other seven pieces. So really we only need six pieces, but as you'll see here in a few minutes, it's good to have a couple of spares in case we break a wire along the way and our hands are full. We don't have to struggle to find our pliers and wire and make more. So we have our pieces of wire at three and a half inches. Okay, so where we start is pick any of the petals. We want these two, two rings to intersect on our line that goes right through. So we want those two rings to intersect right on that line. And we take our wire and we stick through this pedal. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is see our center wire that's sticking up. I'm going to trim it about halfway down just so that it's not poking me as much and in my way because these ends can get pretty sharp as you'll see here in a few minutes as we create more of these pokes so here within this pedal right here we're just going to slip that wire in underneath of our divine I am ring and we want this wire to be right on that line as well as the intersecting of our other two rings our pedal so we want that one petal tip to intersect right on the line, right in the center of our Divine I Am ring, and our wire to be sitting right on that line as well. And we can just, by hand, just give a few little turns just to kind of keep our wire in place. We'll fine tune this in a moment. So again, go into each of these petals and moving those rings around to where we have an intersecting of petals right on the line. And we slip our wire through and underneath the Divine I Am ring. And simply twisting that together with our hands. Just to keep it somewhat in place for now. Oops, moving these two because this one was just a little tight because I might have tightened my center up. It's a little tight here, so you got to kind of push those over. Now, then run the wire underneath so that the wire is right along the line, your pedals are intersecting on the line and just give a few twists by hand just to kind of hold it somewhat in place. Again, just feeding your three and a half inch wire underneath the Divine I Am ring and closing it. to approximately the right place. And one more. Lining up your wire with your line. And just twisting your ends together. So now then, we'll simply pick one petal, and we'll make sure that this petal intersects our line right above the Divine I Am ring, and we just hold those together. And then our wire, we're going to reach in and start to twist. We simply give a little pull and twist. And as we pull, we of course want to hold down all three of our rings together as we pull and twist this wire. 
Now, one secret on working with wires and twisting them is that when you grip this wire here, you don't want to grip way down here at the base. You want to grip up on the wire a little ways because we don't want to compromise the integrity of the wire by reaching way down here and gripping here. We want to move up at least halfway up on this wire when we grab onto it with the pliers. So again, I'm holding my rings down in place so that they intersect perfectly over this line. My wire is intersecting over the line. And I just pull up a little bit and twist. And we're just going to do this until it's taut. It doesn't have to be super tight. As you see, it's still not quite all the way tight. And we don't want to tighten it all the way yet. But we just want to try to keep these rings from moving too far. Okay, so that's pretty good there. Now then, I usually like to go straight across to the other pedal after the one that I just did. So let's go straight across from that first pedal. And again, bring in both of our rings so that they intersect right on top of our Divine I Am ring. Right on that line. I'm holding those rings down in place. I have my fingers here, putting downward pressure. I grab my wire, and I start to pull and then twist. Basically, what you're doing with the pull and twist method is you pull up a little bit so that you're taking some of the play out of the wire, and then as you twist, you just have a little bit of tension on it pulling. You don't have to just pull it tight the whole time you're twisting. But it's a pull up and then just kind of letting down as you twist. And again, there's still just a little play, which is perfect. We don't need it super tight yet. Alright, get this wire that fell down in there. Okay, so again, lining up your rings right over your line lining up your wire right over the line putting pressure on your rings so that they don't move grabbing your wire pull and twist and again you can grab about halfway down on the wire but just don't go lower than that with your pliers because then again we just put marks in that wire and can compromise the integrity because these will be our permanent wires here once we're done okay yeah there's some play in there which is just fine then again I go straight across over here and if you have to pull on the ring to add pressure make sure that you hold your divine I am ring in place because the tape won't hold it if you're just pulling the whole thing. You'll move the whole thing over. So if you have pressure on these rings, try to hold all rings in place at once. Okay, I have my rings intersecting right over my line. I have my wire right over my line. And I simply pull and twist. just until it's taut. Okay, now then our last two. I need to move this wire over a little bit that slipped. Then I need to squeeze these rings together slightly so that they are intersecting right over top of our line. I'm holding everything together with my left hand and reaching down with my right hand and pulling and twisting. My wire still is not quite center. So I, before I get that wire too tight, I need to make sure that it is moved over. 
to where it sits right on that line. Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna pull and twist. centered and then make sure my pedals are centered a lot of times when you get to this very last pedal there might be some pressure you see how I have to kind of push these two together so again holding down your divine I am ring and just bringing those two rings together so that they intersect right on that line almost feels like you need a second set of hands here which I would not recommend actually. Ask your soul to come in and assist in the lining up of everything here for you. So again, a pull and a twist, grabbing that wire about halfway down. Pull and twist. Okay. So now we're just gonna kinda look and see what we're looking for is that our pedals are intersecting right on top of our divine I am wire right on each line in that each of our pedals is fairly close in size and shape so this one's looking pretty good it can be that if you have one that is too large or too small you might be able to do just a little bit of adjusting at this point but you may want to actually cut the wire and redo if you have any that are not that are just exceptionally large or exceptionally small but these they look all very similar in size so I think we will call this one beautiful okay so now then we're gonna go through and do a little bit more final tightening on these. What I would suggest is to go through all of your wires that are sticking out and cut them down just a little ways. So you can see where this one here is and then he has his ends that stick up. I would chop just those tips off. You might want to leave like, you know, like a half an inch still sticking out. Now at this time when we start trimming wires, is a time that we might want to have safety glasses on because these things will fly and they will get all over your house too so just cutting down leaving at least a half an inch of that wire there for now we just want to get that, those splayed ends out of the way so that we can reach in better to tighten these okay so we'll start at any one of these pedals and again we're going to hold everything down with one hand now again when we're reaching in to tighten in these we're just going to grab up here towards the tip and we're going to pull and wiggle a little bit because what this does when we have our fingers holding these rings in place then when we reach in we can pull and wiggle a little bit and that will take all of the play out of the wire so now then that we've wiggled that a little bit and you find that play now just pull and then twist pull and twist just until you feel it being tight that feels pretty good I'm gonna go just a little bit more pull and twist now you might find that and you can just go one after the other now you might find that if you over tighten these it'll snap which is why we have our spare wire laying around just in case so that at any time we ever snap a wire we can reach in and grab another one so again I have my fingers holding everything down I'm grabbing at the tip of my twisted wire and I'm just pulling and jiggling just a little bit see how I'm just kinda of pulling and jiggling and that's going to take out any of that play so now then pull and twist until all that play comes out pull and twist a 
wonderful. Yeah, so basically then you can just grab it by hand and see if, if there's much play in there, which that is pretty taunt. And again, watch these tips. They are sharp, especially depending on the pliers. So again, holding those down with your fingers, reaching in, giving it a little wiggle and a pull to get that play out and then pull and twist until you don't feel that play anymore. Awesome. Let me just keep going, holding those down with one set of fingers or one hand, reaching in, a little jiggle, pull and twist. until that feels pretty taut so that there's no play left. Pressure down with one hand, pull and twist and a little jiggle with the other. See now there's still still a bit of play in that one you see as I move this wire around that really moves that ring around still. So just a couple more twists and twist. That's pretty tight. Pull and twist to take that play out. Some more wiggles to make sure that that play shows up to be pulled out. So next, we're going to cut this one free by going to that center piece and we're going to cut that wire. So cut it on both sides of your knot there. And again, safety glasses are recommended. So now we have it free from the center and we can begin to slowly lift this entire seat of life up off the cardboard. So this is where I like the painter's tape because it pulls off easier. So as we're grabbing our divine I am ring, our heavier gauge underneath ring, you just heard a pop. That was popping the wires off there and we're just lifting off. So now we have our seed of life. Okay. So from this point, we're going to do a final tightening and tucking of these wires. So I like to still trim these wires down a little bit more. This next time, I usually trim them to, oh, about just a little over, about a quarter of an inch. So a quarter to three eighths of an inch so that I have about this much of the wire sticking out. There's still a bit there, but not too much. So if you can kind of see about where I'm trimming those at. Just about halfway to the halfway of where we're at right now with them. Okay. So, yeah, just a little over a quarter of an inch. Okay, so this is where we're going to hold this in your hands again. And just make sure that we have all the play out. So I'm putting one finger over here on the side where that hoop is under my Divine I Am ring. And then I'm holding with my thumb the other two rings so that I have pressure holding all this together in case my wire breaks. So at this point, as I'm doing my final tightening and I break the wire, 
all I have to do is then reach over and grab a new wire and slip it in and I have my same spot saved. So again, just a little jiggle to make sure that there's all the play out, a pull and a twist. Okay, there's no more play in that that I feel. So this one here, again, one finger on one side of the divine I am, your thumb over here on the other side. Just a little bit of a pull and a jiggle to make sure that there's no play left in there. And a pull and a twist. And again, keeping your pliers out here towards the cut tip versus way down here. You don't want to have your pliers down here. You want to have it out here towards that cut tip. Okay, we just keep going around. This one here, I can see the play in it. So I'm going to give it a nice tug and pull. Pull and twist. Pull and twist. And again, you might even want to just twist one until it breaks, and then you know exactly where your limits are. <laughs> That's how I like to find my limits, is to push them until it breaks. All right, so just a little pull and twist and a jiggle. Make sure that all that play comes out. And then I just check it with my hands to see and feel. Because you can kind of feel if there's still wiggle room in there. This one feels like there's a bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to pull and twist on this one. Yeah, that feels good. And again, oh, this one here's got quite a bit of play in it. So again, just a nice pull and a jiggle to help pull that play out. A pull and a twist. And what I was saying was, you know, just be here with it. Use your intuition. It'll guide you. You'll feel when it's tight enough. Some more pull and twist. Okay. Next, we're going to trim these down even more. Actually, gosh, an, an eighth of an inch is about all we really want to go for the length on these wires is an eighth of an inch. I'm sorry, not an eighth. My apologies. A quarter of an inch. So a quarter of an inch on these wires is about the right length. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball this, but this is a quarter of an inch right here. Perfect. That one there is a quarter of an inch. And so that's the length that we want every one of these. It's about that quarter of an inch. The rule of thumb is that you want at least three twists on your wire in order to hold it in place so that the ends don't, so that it doesn't slip. Okay, so now that I have these all at a quarter of an inch approximately, next we're going to be bending the ends over. So this wire right here, I'm going to bend over see this is the top ring I'm going to bend this wire that sticks up over so that it tucks underneath it tucks in between this middle ring here this chalice ring and your divine I am ring so I'm going to use my finger you can use your pliers here if you wish and just use the tip of your pliers to push it over and we're just going to bend this over so that the tip of that wire is sticking down that way now we'll, we'll come back through and fine-tune our bends but for now we're just going to bend them all in the right direction. So what I mean by the right direction is this one here you would bend over so that it tucks. Let me see if I can show you here with the camera. A lot of times it doesn't want to focus right here. 
but see this is the top ring right here we're going to bend this wire so that it folds over to, to the middle ring in our divine eye or am ring that's where we want it to tuck is we want it to tuck down in there between our middle ring and our divine I am ring so then this one here we would fold it over so that it tucks down now this one here we would fold the other direction we would fold it so that it tucks down in here between the middle ring and the divine I am ring so just kind of push that over we just get it started in the general direction and this one here tucks over this way. And this last one tucks over this way. Okay, now we're going to fine tune how these are tucked in there. As you can kind of see, let's see which one am I at? This one here, you can kind of see where that tip is there. We want that tip to be tucked down, down inside of there to where it won't get snagged on anything where it won't stick out and poke so basically I just kept bending it over so that it tucks straight down in there right to where the tip that sharp tip is sticking right there nesting right in between your divine I am ring and your middle chalice ring and that's what we do with each of these now when you do this and you notice that you get one that really starts to get loose what you'll probably want to do is if you get a loose one here let me go through and see if I find any that are loose and then I can just show you otherwise I'll explain so again just tucking the tips straight down in there between the divine I am and that middle chalice And this is the way we build all of our Tauruses. You'd be amazed at watching and looking at some of the professional looking wire wraps where this is all you do is you tuck the ends. So if you get one of these that's like really loose after you've tucked it, you'll want to go through and replace that wire. So you would just simply hold that together. You'd come in, you'd snip that out and you simply feed in your wire again bring it back through twist and then keep twisting and pulling until you get it back into place again so as you notice there might be well there should be this little cupping of sorts on this one side you see how those petals kind of cup up just a little bit which is absolutely perfect Okay, next, let's do our meditation with these chalice rings. Now the chalice is that crystal clear, pure consciousness light. It's very interesting in that the seed of life pattern of these six rings, it is a sacred geometry pattern that I see this a lot when, especially right here where we're working with this chalice energetics. Again, we have the divine I am ring, which is the energy of the soul. And then we have these chalice petals. So going into your heart, which you're still there, grounded, connected in the heart space. Closing your eyes after you've looked at this pattern for a moment. Just take in that pattern, then close your eyes and imagine that pattern just extending out from you, fractaling out. It's almost like a spider web. And as that pattern extends out throughout your field, throughout your reality, it's cleaning, clearing, uncreating, harmonizing. transforming all energies, all creation with this sacred geometry pattern.
and this is kind of an individual experience that you will experience different from anybody else. But basically, this crystal clear, pure, pure light in this pattern is there holding space for you. Okay. So now, we do this one more time. Of going through, you can use your same cardboard. And just repeat the same thing that we did to create this seed of life. Okay, now we have our two seed of lives. So it's the two seed of lives that come together. Each one is six petal, and then as we ratchet one of them, it becomes the twelve petal, the torus. It is actually creating that field, that toroidal field of the tube torus. So this is where we're going to begin with our harmonizer ring. So the harmonizer ring is the ring that I see as existing in that plane between consciousness and everything physical, light, sound, vibration, electromagnetics. So we have the harmonizer ring that is basically, I call it a cosmic blender. It is bringing consciousness more into the physical. So we're going to begin by placing our harmonizer ring flat and then our seat of life we want the divine I am ring to be facing upwards so this divine I am ring is on top and we're simply going to wire on our first seat of life onto the divine onto the harmonizer ring and then we'll wire on the other side so we use our 22 gauge the thinner wire so I have here 46 inches 46 inches of this wire this will leave us plenty of leeway so here we go we begin by simply holding one of your petals up here onto your harmonizer ring we take one end of our 46 inch wire and we simply feed it through. Now I take about half of that wire through so that I am about halfway at about the halfway point so that I have my tail is about the same on either side. My tail on this side and my tail on this side. Now one of the keys to working with this wire is, is that you don't ever want to get a little bend or a curl in it. If you have your length of wire, and I'll show you for example here, is that if you have your wire and you end up getting this little curl around and you pull that tight and you get that bend, you can never get that bend out. So it's best to just start over if you get a sharp bend in your wire it's best to just simply start over. Another reason that we have a spool of wire versus just supplying you with a specific length. So again, right here I'm holding my pedal onto this outer ring. Now what my sister Brenda does, and you might want to do this too, and I'll try it. I've never done it this way before. Is we take our little bit heavier gauge wire, our 22 gauge, and you trim off like a three inch piece. And you can simply hand tighten around one of your petals. And then do it on the opposite side as well on one of your petals. So that way, it's holding it in place for you while you're going around and weaving in your outer wire. So, I want to give this a shot. I will tighten this down 
on opposite sides to where it looks like because your pedals you want to set right on top right on top of your harmonizer ring your outer ring you want those pedals to be sitting right on the top of that ring so I have my heavier gauge wire that is easy to twist and hold in place so that way my seed of life is held firmly right on the top now then this is where we go through and again I have about the halfway point of my wire here so I've fed it through this inside loop now then this wire is going to rest right down on the grooves here so as you see this wire is going to go right around that groove and into the groove and back around again now this is where a judgment call needs to be made where you wrap your wires I will show you on this complete one is that there is a wire that wraps only in one spot I'm trying to see if there's a spot where the wire wraps twice nope let's see when Brenda makes hers that wire only wraps around one time okay so that wire we bring it around it nests right in there and now then we're going to bring this wire through right through here because we're weaving this wire so I just want to make sure you see this our wire comes in around your chalice ring and then around the harmonizer ring and then it comes up through here so you can kind of weave it up through so that your wire is resting right inside of this notch now then this wire rests here it skips this notch and here's where we came up through the first time so the first time it comes up and into this notch and it skips this one because it wraps around and comes up here so just watch as you wrap your wire that you are always skipping that notch so now then here our wire is here and it's going to wrap around the back side and come up here so again here's your wire over here it doesn't hit this notch it comes up on this next one so then we'll find to where the wire comes right here now we're going to run it underneath of our pedal so that we're going to wire this pedal on and again we'll just kind of move that pedal around to where this wire now we're going to start pulling tight so now then it's going to be pulling tight like a thread so over here we're just going to keep pulling this wire pull this wire nice and tight so that it holds this first pedal in tight and then the wire just hides itself down in these notches and now then it comes up over here and we're going right over top of this chalice ring and again just pull in that tight and then we keep weaving now we weave that up and around and pull it tight every time every time you stop just give a nice pull tight weaving that around now we're going to come up let's see now then this is where you just kind of have to use a determination of where we don't want to bring this around on this on over top of the over top of the chalice ring yet we want to do one more wrap so this is the point where you might need to feed your wire through 
But again, as you feed your, if you feed the end of the wire through, just make sure that you don't get a kink in it anywhere along the way. So we need to go underneath of this chalice ring. There we go. So now then again, pull in tight as we move around. Now then, we'll find that it lands perfectly right here in the center of that chalice ring. So here we go, and we're just pulling tight as we wrap that around. Coming up underneath of here. And again, always watching so that you're always skipping. So right here is where your 20 gauge or your 22 gauge wire wrapped around here. And it doesn't wrap around this one, but it does wrap around this one. So every other one is where your wire lands. And again, just pull in that tight to try to get all that tension out of there. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy off right here because it's kind of in my way. So I'm going to cut that piece off. That was that one side that we twisted. Okay, so then again, just pull in that tight. And pulling that tight as you can with your fingers and then moving around. And then here we go. We're going to go over top of that chalice ring here. Again, just pull and tight as we wrap around. And we just keep going. Just weaving that wire. So now then, I'm going to bring it up here to where I can grab that. Again, making sure that I am still on track there, skipping every other one. And now then, as I come around, I'll go over top of the chalice ring again, the next chalice ring. Pulling that tight. So you'll want to kind of watch and feel where, you, where that wire lands best. So that wire will be on the notch of the big ring. But then you want that wire to land so that it lands perfectly in whichever notch you need on that chalice ring so that it is making a smooth flow of that wire across. Because that wire lands in that notch of that chalice ring as well. So again, just keep wrapping, pulling tight. Okay. So at this point, we're really close to coming back together. I'm going to move over to the, the end that I first started with, that very first pull, and I'm going to continue on this one and work my way back the other way. First I'm going to cut this anchor wire that we had on to get it out of the way. <coughs> okay, so here was our very first one, our very first wrap around. So now then, I'm going to pull that tight again to make sure that I have any play out of here. And I just wrap around, pulling this wire through, making sure I'm not kinking it. Pulling it tight as I wrap again. And I'm not ready to go over top of my chalice ring yet. So i got to kind of lift that chalice ring up just a little bit to get this wire or else take this end and weave through. I don't like to weave through this end and take the end and weave through because that's a lot of times where you get that kink. So you just got to be really careful as you pull this through that this doesn't end up to be this hoop that creates a kink in it. So you got to kind of just kind of make sure that it doesn't kink twist that wire around. Okay, now I'm going back and making sure that I'm landing in my appropriate notches here. So here we are in this one, here we are in this one, pulling that tight. Okay, so this time as I come around, it's going to go over top of the very last one of these chalice rings. So here we go over the top and down under. Now then, the tie-off point that we want, we want it to be close to one of these ends. 
So I'm just going to keep going with this point right here, with this wire here. I'm just going to keep pulling that tight, weaving it through, pulling it through without kinking. And I'm just going to keep going. And I'm going to bypass this wire here. So now then, I'm just going to keep going past because we want these two to go over top of each other. So this is going to be our tie off point right here. And again, just making sure we're not kinking our wire. So there we go. These two are crossing right here at this point. So now then it is figuring out the exact spot we want to tie these. So I'm going to bring this end back over here to the other side. And I'm going to tie it over here. So as I flip this over, we have these two wires that intersect right here. And again, we want to make sure that these are pulled tight both wires and as I pull both of them tight where I want to have my intersecting point to where I start twisting them together is going to be down in here close down in here close to the inside area of this chalice ring so as you see I have both my ends and I'm pulling them the direction that they flow flowed now as I'm pulling them tight I'm going to start to wrap around and just basically twisting that wire. So then I'll grab it and I'll twist it some more. So then, as you see, we have this spot right here where they're twisted together. Now this is one that we want to leave a little bit of a longer tail. Let's see, let me grab my ruler. And at this point here, we want, you know, about three quarters of an inch of a tail sticking out. So that's about that far right there. So now then, with my pliers, I'll grab towards this tip and I'll just kind of jiggle and pull and twist. Pull and twist. Pull and twist. Now this is a lighter gauge wire and so this one requires you know more little knots in here um, to hold this in place so that it doesn't come undone. Now we don't want to twist too much because then we have a chance of breaking it and boy these are not fun to break this particular wire because then you have to go through and take all your wire out and reweave it. So right now I have this wire that sticks up right here. I'm going to end up folding it. So right now I'm going to push it over. I'm going to push it over so that it lands back in this fold again. I'm just using my finger to push it over. Now then, as I have that pushed over, as you can see in that fold, now I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim it to about a half an inch. Okay, so approximately half an inch is what I'm going to leave sticking out of that, that trim. So here we go. I'm just going to trim to where this is about a half an inch of the wire. And then we're just going to massage it down in with your fingers and the tip of your pliers too and just pushing it in so that it's just sitting right in that fold. Simple as that. It just sits in that fold. Now then we want to look around on both sides to make sure that that's not going to be sticking out someplace to where it will get caught or poke or anything like that. And if need to, you might be able to just trim that back a little bit more if you need. But where this one sits, it is absolutely perfect because the tip of it sits down here underneath of this chalice ring, between the chalice ring and the harmonizer ring, to where it's not going to catch on anything. And there we go. We have our first side, our seed.
So, now we simply do this again. And again, you have your Divine I Am ring that sits out here on the outside. All of your chalice rings sit out here on top of your harmonizer ring. Now we'll flip it over. Now this is the point where you will bring your second seed in. And again, have your heavier gauge Divine I Am ring here on the top side. Your chalice rings all sit out here on the top side of on this top side. Now this is where you'll want to play around with ratcheting to where you get the best feel or the best look of where it is um, that you'll make those 12 petals. As you see we have those 12 petals and to me the right over here it's just kind of it, because each of these six petals are pretty close to being perfect but not exactly so you might want to just keep ratcheting until your 12 petals look and feel which right there that just feels right to me um, and it looks pretty good you know you can play around with it some more you might want to ratchet it another another time just to see how the petals all line up and yeah that's just not lining up how I feel it right here so there it is this is where I want it to be so I'm going to use the Brenda method again and I'm going to tag each side here with our heavier 22 gauge wire sorry our heavier 20 gauge wire it can be confusing on the gauges because the larger the number the smaller the wire so our 20 gauge is our heavier which takes uh, it, it holds better it's, it's just easier to utilize but it's almost too much to use for your weave uh, for your thread okay so again finding that spot where I feel it's just perfect right there and then I'm just going to tag I'm going to tie down each side so over here and I'm not going to worry about where I weave it at I'm just going to put it through both of them and I'm just going to twist it on and then I'll have to do some final adjustments before I tighten it on there but I'm just going to get each side started for now in the general vicinity that I want them to be. And again, all of your chalice rings need to be sitting on top on this side of your harmonizer ring. So that feels like the right spot. So I'm just going to come over here and pull and twist get this one anchored in where I want it. Oops, I just bent my ring a little, which is okay. Pull and twist. Get that side where I want it. That looks beautiful. Come over here to this side. Get this side where I want it. I'm just holding it together. I pull and twist. Bring these two together so that it's just held in place. So next, we again measure out our 46 inches. And there's 18, 36, and 46. Okay. <clears throat> so this time when we start, this side gets a little bit more difficult. So when we're weaving this time, we don't want to weave our wire onto these chalice rings on this back side that are already wired on. We don't want to go over top of these ones. We need to go in between the chalice ring that's wired on already and the harmonizer ring. So this gets to be more tricky. So let's just pick a spot over here on our fresh side, on our new side. And we're just going to run the wire through about halfway again. 
and then make sure that whatever whatever groove we're in that we are not in the same groove as the wire before we need it in a different groove so that's where I'm at is that I am going to hold this wire over here this groove right here is where we have not used before this groove here is from our previous wire so I'm going to start with my wire in this groove that hasn't been used and we're going past the one that has been over here to the other one that's been used and of course I'm going over top of my chalice ring now then as I go I have to now feed my end of my wire through so that it is not going over top of my original seed so this is where it gets tricky again so you have to feed the wire through and back around and again you just do it nice and slow so you don't get any sharp bends and pulls and loops in your wire okay so there we go I have that very first string stringing I have that very first connection made right here so now then you double check to make sure that your wire is in the correct little notch of your chalice ring so that when you pull each end tight your wire sits perfectly on top of your notch of your chalice ring and your harmonizer ring so you have a nice flow so now then I pull pull both sides okay and then I just continue on over here I feed it down under so that my wire is only wrapping around the harmonizer ring the big thick heavy outer ring it's not right now on this strand right here on this weave it is not wrapping around your chalice ring on either side it is only going around the harmonizer ring and in the appropriate spot so there we go now then it's landed I pull it tight so now then the next time that I come around here as you see so now then it's over here this next time I weave it's going to come over top of my chalice ring on this side so bring this over now then I'm going to grab my other end as I pull tight make sure that that's nice and taut now then my wire wraps and lands on the appropriate little notch of my chalice ring as it goes around the harmonizer ring and again watching so that as you weave this back through that I weave through the appropriate spot because if I weave through over here then of course I've gone through yeah you, you, you gotta make sure that you are weaving your end through the appropriate spot on your harmonizer ring so that you're not including this ring in the back and again just take your time here because and pull slowly so now that I'm going back through and double checking that my wire lands right where I want it to on my chalice ring on the front and then I just pull that tight again and I just keep weaving through and again this time it's going to be only weaving around my harmonizer ring. It's not going to go around the chalice. So there we go. Pull that nice and tight. And again, bypassing the chalice ring on the back side. And this time, 
I will go over top of the chalice ring on the front side making sure that I don't get any knots there as I'm moving along. And again, just be nice and slow and gentle as you pull this through so you don't get any kinks in your wire. Okay, so this time I'm going to be weaving over top, I believe. Let's see. So my chalice ring sits here and if I can weave it over this time, but as I do, I'm a little bit off center. So if I, I would choose probably to actually, whoops, sorry, couldn't see there. So if, if I weave it through over top of my chalice here, it looks like I would be better suited to weave it over onto this next side. I'm going to cut this holding ring off or this holding wire off. Now, I don't think I'm going to go over top of my chalice ring this, this round. So let me go back under that chalice ring. I think that it'll be better suited to go over top of this next pull. So again, pulling that taut to keep that wire tight. Now then this time, as I weave through, I'm going to weave it so that I am going over top of my chalice ring on this round right here. So again, pulling that tight and just making sure that wherever I land, I'm going to land perfectly within that little notch, the notch that I want on this chalice ring to hold it into place. If you need to, just set this down, step away, take a breath. It is okay. Just being slow and gentle, staying in your heart. Okay, there we go. I have that woven around my chalice ring here, and I'm pulling tight. Taking any of those little bends out of there, just putting that tension. Okay, then we weave through, and again this time we're only going around the chalice ring on this weave. Or, I'm sorry, around the harmonizer ring, around our outer ring. So you might need to use your pliers once in a while to help you move this around to where you need it. And if you do want to pull with your pliers to take any of the tension out, make sure that you've pulled with your hands first to take any of the tension out. And then if you want to pull with your wire, you can, but grab it towards the end. Because again, you don't want to grab your wire anywhere along the way because it can ruin the integrity of it. So if you want to pull with your pliers, you have to grab here towards the end, and then you can use to pull some of that tension out, like that. But really, you should be able to utilize just your hand to pull on that. Okay, so now then, again, this is where we're at with this one, is, is that we're not going to go around the chalice ring yet. We're going to just stick around our outer ring. And this next weave will go around the chalice ring. So again, making sure as we pull, we don't have any hoops or loops in our wire. Okay, pulling that taut going over top of our chalice ring here, finding that appropriate little notch for it to land in on that ring. Weaving through. Okay. 
So at this point, I'm going to go back through to this other side now. And I'm going to work from this end over. Okay, again, coming over here and pulling any of that slack out. It's looking really good. Pulling any of that slack out and again watching for your sharp pokey ends there. So pulling on that, just keeping the weaving around. Making sure I'm landing in the appropriate spot. Now this here, this has gotten a little tricky. Now then I have to come back over here to this side and weave up underneath of this other chalice ring because you don't want to put this on top of your chalice ring on the back side. And again, safety glasses is not a bad thing. Um, let's just keep an eye with the end of this wire as I'm fiddling around here. Okay, so continuing the weave. Going around only the outer ring at the moment. Just going slow and gentle so you don't get a little kink in your wire. Okay, now I'm about around to where this spot is, so I'm going to trim off this tie down that we had there. Okay, making sure our wire is taut. And it looks like this is the perfect time to go around this chalice ring. So we go over this chalice ring. Finding the appropriate, the appropriate notch to land in. Making sure we haven't gone around our other chalice ring on the other side. And we just keep weaving on. myself throughout the other side entirely all right so now then we're just keeping every time we go we just want to pull that tight again to make sure that we have a nice tight smooth wire all the way around And just going slow and gentle so that we don't create a little hoop or bend in our wire. Pulling tight again. Just weaving on. Okay, we're getting really close. Okay, this is the time that we'll go over top of our final chalice ring. Right here. And again, making sure that you are still on track, that you are going over the same little notch that you need to be where there's not been a wire before and that you land on the appropriate notch for your flow on this chalice side. Pulling that tight. And weaving through again. Now it's time to figure out where we want our intersection of that wire, our tie-off to be. So, let's see. the best point. 
I think right here is actually the best point where I'm at. So because basically where we tie this off at, remember where we twist our wires together at, we'll then want to have a spot, our direction picked, where we want that tail to go. And so if I bring these two wires together right here, then I can tuck that tail down inside, down inside of here. So this is where I'm going to bring those two wires together. This is where we're going to make that final pull, that pull in each direction, so that it's nice and taut. And now then, I'm going to, well, let's see, make sure that you get them one on top of the other correct, so that when you twist it, I always twist to the right, that's just the way that I, that I twist. So again, as you bring your two wires together, make sure that when you twist it to the right like that, that they're going to be making that perfect little intersection. So here we go. There's our perfect little intersection. And we'll just do a few twists by hand. And again, we want this tail to be oh, about three quarters of an inch. To an inch. So now then, I'm going to reach out here towards the end of this wire and just kind of give it a little pull and a twist. Pull and a twist. So doing this straight out from where, from where your twist is, from where your twist begins there. So just a little pull and a twist. Now we don't want to over twist this, so basically as you pull, and you see that you have a little bit of play in there just pull and then as you twist let go of that I mean don't pull as hard so basically we don't want to over tighten that because then that'll break that feels just about right now I'm going to cut this off to about that half inch mark maybe just a little bit longer even and now then I'm going to push and tuck I'm going to tuck this end down in here where it's kind of hidden. So here we go. I'm just going to push that over with my thumb. Then we use my tip of my pliers and just push that a little bit more. Just kind of get it to land right down where we want it. Actually, I've got to use these plier tips just to get in there a little bit more push that in to where that tip nests right down inside. So you can kind of see where that tip, well maybe you can't. Let's see if I can show you where that tip is. Oh there's that tip right there. Right down inside. So I just want to make sure that that tip stays resting right there in that crevice of that large ring. Perfect. Okay. Oh my goodness. There we are. Your Taurus. Absolutely beautiful. Good work getting to here. This is where we want to be. So with the Taurus, you know, there might be that little bit of play. You don't want to pull it too hard, but you can certainly pull apart just a little bit to where if you want, you could always put a crystal inside of there. And, you know, some of the things to do with these Tauruses, besides just holding it on the body, sleeping with it, um, they love to spin. So you can actually get those battery powered or plug in spinners or even the um, solar powered spinners off of Amazon for like seven, eight bucks. And um, they hang up and you can just hang this on, on the wire that comes with it and it just sits and spins. And it is really a fantastic way to run energy through the house because when it is spinning, it's just moving energy. So, a 
final meditation. Still in the heart, the soul right here with you. And just imagining and asking for your soul's light to utilize this tool for you and for anybody else. That your soul's light comes through at any time that you need for that reminder that this holds space for you. So basically, at this point, you can put your intentions into this toroidal field. The Taurus will hold your intentions. Another fun thing is putting crystals with it. This is a piece of rose quartz, which then this field broadcasts that energetics throughout it. Okay, well, thank you all for being here with this tutorial. And at any time, don't be afraid to start over with it if you ever need, but it is absolutely perfect the way it is. And even if things aren't exactly beautiful aesthetically, you can kind of move this around a little bit to, you know, kind of shift and move each side slightly. And even though they seem delicate, it's a pretty tough one. I've never broken a single one of my Tauruses, and I've had a lot of Tauruses through the time, all the different ones that we've created. And I have never once broke one after it's been made. And we don't ever receive reports of breaking a Taurus. So really, the only thing that you can do to damage this is dropping it from a far height to where it bends. And even then, I've bent some of my larger Tauruses and was able to bend them back into shape just fine. So don't worry about it being a delicate flower. Um, it is definitely a flower, but it is a power flower. Um, yeah, enjoy. Thank you very much for being here, and we look forward to hearing from you on what you find energetically with this Taurus, the Alchemist Taurus. All right.